Hello, 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 everyone. This is Tanika Steens. I am the Mindful Coach, and this is Mindful Intentions Nurture and Drive Your Business. Today, I have a guest who is going to share with us her story of grief and overcoming. This might resonate with a lot of you, so brace yourselves as I read this bio, but I'm telling you, it's a beautiful ending, so don't get upset and too teary-eyed because we'll have joy in the end. Um, my guest, her name is Ann Hintz, and when she was 19, she woke up one morning to find her mother dead in her bathroom. 20 years later, the tears from this trauma were still just under the surface. Ann found a simple technique that helped her release these emotions, but she went further and can now put her awareness inside her body and has changed the bone structure of her skull and grown a half an inch at the age of 55. Ann has found that seeking out our truth, what we truly feel and accepting those feelings is the key to inner peace. And today she's gonna share that with us and how we can arrive at that place. And thank you so much for being here today. Please tell us a little bit more about who you are, what you do and why you do it. Sure, I am a wife and a mother. I'm from England originally. I live in California now, have done for a long time. So I have a mid-Atlantic accent. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm just a regular person. I call myself an author only in that I wrote a book. <laughs> I call myself a spiritual teacher only in that I'm what I've discovered through my journey, I believe, are spiritual concepts. And I call myself a public speaker because here I am speaking in public. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And they all apply. So we thank you for speaking today. So what began you on your journey? Okay, well, my, I mean, my journey, I guess, started at birth, right? Because that's when we're programmed, that's when we're trained in how we take on life. So I was actually born with my right foot up against my right shin. So I had physical therapy for the first six weeks of my life. Then I was handed over into adoption, into a family that had just suffered a trauma because they had a two-year-old adopted boy and then they adopted another little girl and they had her for six months. And then the birth mother changed her mind and they could do that at a the time. They could change their mind up to six months. So they had to hand that little girl back that they had raised for the first six months. And then I was the replacement into the family for that little girl. So that, you know, adoption itself is a trauma because you lose everything that you know. But then when you're adopted into a family that doesn't really want to take you in because they're not sure if the, my birth mother would have done the same thing, there's more trauma involved in that. But my birth mother didn't change her mind. I stayed with them. And then at six months, we started traveling the world because my for my dad's business. So we moved to Barbados first. Then we moved to Sierra Leone in West Africa. And while we were there, we had a house fire. And I was the one who woke up one morning heard the flames, didn't know what they were, but opened my eyes and found the flames coming in through the wall. So there is another good size trauma. And then we moved to Hong Kong. And while we were in Hong Kong, I was sent to boarding school in England. And I was sent to my brother's boarding school, which was a boys boarding school. So I was the first girl boarder at a boys boarding school. And I was teased mercilessly for two years. So that was not a good thing. <laughs> and then um during my teenage years, my dad already had anger issues. So I was very used to work, walking on eggshells and um, being very quiet and trying to be very good. And both my parents became alcoholics during those years. So that was just living in hell. And then when I was 19, I woke up one morning and found my mother dead on the bathroom floor, which was another trauma. But by that point, I had learned how to deal with trauma just by suppressing it. We never talked about emotions or feelings. I had no idea there was any other way of dealing with any of these things. So I just suppressed it all and carried on with life. I moved out to California when I was 21, was a software engineer, got married, had kids. And it wasn't until my, I was in my late 30s that I, I had a business altercation with a couple of other mothers. And they thought I had done something wrong, but they were very self-confident, self-assured, authority type women. And they told me this mother that was so scared on the inside that she'd done something wrong. And my mind just started spinning out of control. It just went over and over what they'd said and what I'd said and what they'd done. I couldn't sleep for days because I just couldn't get it out of my head. And that's when I realized I don't think this is normal. <laughs> I don't think other people would react so intensely to something that really wasn't a big deal. And that's when I realized, okay, 
I think it's a little bit like how I would react when my dad told me I'd done something wrong because he was my authority figure and I would react similarly. So that was my little inkling that maybe there was something from childhood that I needed to look at and that was still affecting me now in my late 30s. So that was the start. Wow. Wow. And so when you were able to associate the two, how eye opening was that, that, you know, there's something that's still there that I haven't really acknowledged. How did that affect you? It was really eye opening. You know, the first start of awareness, (laughs) I just had not been aware of that until that happened. And I think a lot of us has to go through something right, that, that stirs things up inside of us and makes yeah. us realize that, that there's more to it than we think. I like what you said about how, you know, is it really, you went to an extreme in that situation to where, why am I this upset about this? And what is that trigger? And we don't really know that, oh, okay, let's look at this. It's a pattern and it's, it's unhealthy, but we become used to that pattern. And so that's how we cope and that's how we deal. So when someone maybe addresses it, we we tend to think that, yeah, they're wrong because this is normal for me, right? It's right. normal for you. It was. It's totally normal for us. And we do. We just replay things over and over again. And we just don't realize we're doing it. And still we ta- start to question it. Yeah. 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 So yeah. for me, I was actually lucky because it was in that time frame sometime after that that I went to a doctor's appointment and he happened to be a holistic physician. I don't remember to this day why I went to see him, but I know it was nothing to do with any emotions or any of my history. It was something else. But he recognized I was more stressed than I should be because I was a stay at home mother with two young boys, which can itself be stressful. But he recognized I was more stressed than that. And he asked me on a scale of zero to 10 what my stress level was. And I said eight. And then he asked me why. And it was the question that made me think back and realize, oh, It was from finding my mother two decades ago now because the tears were still just under the surface. I hadn't dealt with them at all. Yeah, yeah. So he he happened to know this technique called EFT, which is short for Emotional Freedom Technique or Tapping. Mm -hmm. So he tapped with me about my mother's death for about 15 minutes. And I walked away from that appointment being able to tell the story in my mind without the tears there anymore. And that was the first time I realized that we hold those memories and those emotions physically inside our body and that we can let them go, which was mind blowing for me. I I just didn't know that before. Yeah. Yeah. Oftentimes we hold on to those things. It's sort of like a self-punishment, you know, or we, we guilt or shame ourselves, not realizing that we don't have to hold on to it. And it's funny because I remember my therapist said to me, um, I was telling him all these things. I do this and I do that. And I took on this and he was like, well, who told you to? And I looked, I just thought he said, who said you had to do those things? And I was like, well, don't I have to? And he said, well, who told you you had to? And I'm like, wow, you know, it's very eye opening when you realize that, Ooh, you know, I'm, you're, you're doing so much and you're going through the motions, but you're not really addressing Right. Well, it's, we're here. programmed to do it. It's our yeah. normal, right? We take yeah. it on or we're told to do it. We just learn how to do things in those early years of life, how to talk to ourselves, how mm-hmm. to, to talk to other people, how we judge other people. We just learn how to do it. And then, as you said, it's totally our normal. So we can't see it, right? It's like that fish mm-hmm. swimming in water. Yeah. The fish can't see the water. We can't see what we're doing to ourselves mm-hmm. until we get out of the way and look and see what we're doing. Yeah. 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 So how do you feel that spirituality helped you in coming to terms with addressing that past trauma and putting it in perspective? Well, it didn't at that point. That wasn't till way further down my journey. So this was the EFT was the first of three big steps that I felt that I can look back on now and see that I went through these three steps. So I just went home that day and I learned how to use EFT because it was given away for free online. Anyone can go and learn how to do it. So I did that. And then, as I said, I had this engineering background. I like to know things work so that I'm not wasting my time. So I wasn't sure that that one experience with the doctor was was just a fluke, right? It could have just been a fluke. So 
I wanted to check it out for myself. So I had a 17 year old cat at home at the time and he was just starting to fail. His kidneys were starting to fail. And we'd been told he needed to have a daily saline shot, like an injection. The first time I gave him one, my hand was shaking so much. I knew I wasn't going to be able to do it every day, which is what I'd been told I had to do. So I thought, okay, I'm going to try out this technique. <laughs> now, I didn't try it on the cat. Someone the other day thought I was going to try it on the cat. I didn't do that. I tapped on myself. So I tapped about every aspect. I tapped about my hand shaking, about my fear of hurting the cat, and about all the memories I had from all the injections I had had, because I'd had many, because we lived around the world. And the next day when I gave him that shot, the needle just slid right in. All that fear that I had been holding inside the day before had totally gone. So that's when I realized two things. I realized EFT is deceptively powerful. It doesn't look like it's doing much, but I really realized it was. And I realized freedom is on the other side of that fear. Absolutely. And that's really where I wanted to get. So let me ask you, do you, because I, when I think of EFT, because I um, practice it also, but when I think of EFT, it also puts me in the mind of hypnosis on a, on a small scale, because it's sort of like reprogramming and retraining your brain and, and teaching your brain to think in a different way. And, and a lot of times people think that it's something that's scary or you're going underneath or, you know, you're, you're traveling to a different dimension, but it's sort of enlightening because you're freeing yourself of these inhibitions and these fears and you're just allowing your mind to, to absorb the things that you're saying now that's in a positive light. Would you say that they are, are similar to each other or would you, <laughs> would you correlate the two? EFT has been around for a while now, right? It was developed by Gary Craig, who is also an engineer. He used to be a chemical engineer and he developed it to release the negative because he gave it away and other people have morphed the original EFT. People these days are using it more to try to program in the positive. The power in the EFT, and now I know this at a very deep level, the power of EFT is, is accepting the negative. It's going down the neural pathways, the programming that we have inside of us, and it's releasing whatever's stored in the nervous system around that programming. So I don't actually use it on the positive. The only time I would use it on the positive is to bring up the negative that I haven't yet found. Mm -hmm. But the power, that. right, the power yeah. is really in finding the truth, right? Because if we're wanting, even if we're trying to manifest something, right, if we're wanting a new car, it means that we have a car that we don't like, right? Or there's something missing right now. And that's our truth, right? Our yeah. truth would be, I don't like my car right now. Uh, right it, it drives me nuts so whatever it is my actual truth right now if I let that go then there's no resistance anymore to the car to getting a new car so it's it's a subtle difference but it's the negative that's stored in our bodies and so I will continue with my story because it became very clear to me that that is the case so I started using EFT every day I started noticing when I was becoming emotional right, which in itself is a, a, a task, right? It's not easy to do because we get caught up in our emotions. So to begin with, it would only maybe be once a day, but over time it gets easier to catch yourself. So when I found I was becoming emotional, I would tap and I would bring myself back to peace. And I found that things were improving in my life and I wanted more of that. So I wrote down every emotional memory I could think of from my childhood, like, negative beliefs, negative things that happened, just a whole list. It was several sheets of paper. And I tapped through one each night for an hour to an hour and a half each night. And I found I was becoming less reactionary. I was becoming more peaceful inside. Things were shifting around me, right? Because when we're peaceful, that's what we attract from our environment. So it was really nice. And I remember opening my kitchen door one day and actually saying to myself, it feels like I'm living in a different reality. Because my mind, which had been so busy and so judgmental and so critical, which I really hated, it was quiet and it was peaceful. And those voices, those words that I had been replaying over and over in my mind, I realized at that point they'd been my dad's. 
right? I'd been programmed with them in childhood, but I couldn't see that until they were gone Mm -hmm. because they were my normal. So I had to get beyond that in order to look back and say, okay, yeah, those were my dad's words and I don't need that anymore. So having them be gone was a very different normal. I had to get used to it. It just felt so different to begin with. Yeah. Yeah, because you were used to having that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and again, like I said, it becomes comfortable for you. And, you know, once you let it go, it's like, wow, you don't realize that all this time and you feel like all this time I wasted, but at the same time, you've learned very valuable lessons because not only is it something you learned a technique to help yourself, but you can help others. So how did you um, think that you can help others with what you knew? Well, I didn't at that point. So this is good. If you want me to hurry, I can hurry up my story. No, this, you're is, fine. this is the end of the first step. Still. No, go ahead. Just, okay. just take as long as you need. Just let us in on it. <laughs> Whatever you need to do. Just don't mind me. Just keep on talking. Okay. So what I realized EFT is doing, it's opening up the subconscious mind. And as that happens, our awareness expands. So when I started this process, I wasn't aware of even how I felt during the day. But I became aware of how I felt during the day. And then I became at a deeper level, became aware at a deeper level. I became aware of the physical sensations underneath the emotions, right? Because we use words like sadness or frustration or anger. But what we're really describing is the physical sensations, how we're holding ourselves, where we're holding that tension in our body, right? Because if you see someone and you know they're angry, how do you know it's because you're seeing the tension how they're Mm -hmm. holding themselves so we can become aware of that ourselves and I did I became aware it's okay I'm feeling fearful so where am I feeling it and mostly for me it would be in my solar plexus it would be tension in my solar plexus so I was in a group at the time and we were studying a course in miracles and the guy in the group would say every week you don't have to meditate it's all about feeling your feelings So I didn't want to meditate, so that felt good to me. But at the time, I didn't know what my feelings were. And that's when I started my EFT journey. So as the weeks went by and he said this over and over and over again, and I still can't believe I never asked him what he meant. But anyway, I got to the place, I thought, okay, I can. I know where my feelings are, how do I feel them? Which sounds such a silly thing to say, right? Because obviously you can feel your feelings, (laughs) you should be able to, but I couldn't. Those sensations were so used to hiding that I would find them and then I would think something else or I would move or I would even take a deep breath and then I could no longer find it anymore. It would have it would have hidden again. So what I realized I had to do was hold myself like a statue and stop breathing. So I would think a thought that was maybe or catch myself thinking a thought that was fearful. And then I would notice where that fear was in my solar plexus, and I would stop right there. And I would talk to this sensation in my solar plexus. And I'd say things like, okay, I can feel you right there. I can feel your fear sitting in my solar plexus. I just want to feel you. I just want you to be felt. I want to accept you. I don't want you to hide. I don't want you to disappear. I just want to feel you. And at some point, I'd need to take a deep breath. And I would notice that the fear had shifted slightly. So then I would think the same thought again, feel it again, and let it shift again. And I would do it over and over with the same thought until the attachment had disappeared, until the fear had disappeared, at which point they're just words, right? The thought is just a set of words. It no longer has an emotional attachment to me anymore, at which point those words are free, and I'm free of that attachment. And so... Again, things started getting better. So I started using this instead of tapping, I would feel my feelings. And now in the evenings, instead of tapping on my childhood, which I've done, I would lay on the sofa and bring collective traumas to mind, something like 9-11, right? Or the Loma Prieta earthquake that I was in. Just bring those thoughts to mind, feel all the sensations and allow them to be felt. And they would shift. And then I would do it again and again and again. So this felt like a, like another big step, right, beyond EFT. But I'm doing the same thing, but now at a deeper level of awareness. Now, at some point during this process, I'm lying on the sofa 
I'm feeling this fear and at some point the fear releases and I can keep my awareness inside my body, which I had never heard of before. I didn't know what I was doing. Actually, it was it was very strange at the time. And the only way I can kind of explain it is imagine you have a toothache or a stomach ache. You can pinpoint with your mind or with your feeling, you can feel where it's coming from. Yeah. But once the pain has gone, you can't feel that place anymore because there's nothing calling your attention to it. Mm-hmm. I could keep my awareness inside. And so I just started playing with it. Well, I've done it once. Can I do it again? And I found that I could. And then, well, what do I do now? So I started trying to move my awareness around inside. And I found that I could. And I could find tension inside. And I would focus on the tension. Hold my awareness on it. Kind of like I was talking to that fear. And it would shift. And then I would do it again and again and again and found that that tension inside would just melt away. So I started doing this. I'd move around my body. I'd find tension. And it feels really good, right, to release tension that's been stuck inside for decades. So eventually it got to the place that I could put my awareness inside my head, which took many, many months of working inside my body to be able to get inside my head. And that was Um, incredibly eye-opening for me because the pain in my left cheek was just incredible and the forces the tension I could feel that were holding my bones out of alignment were just incredible and I had had this tension and pain inside of my head for decades but had no awareness of it right but now I've got deep enough in my awareness that it came to light and I could use the same technique I just focus on it it would shift, focus on it, it would shift. Eventually got to the point that I actually heard and felt something release and it sounded and felt like old fabric ripping. And I did some research at that point and realized it's it's adhesions in the connective tissue that were releasing. So I wasn't hurting myself, which was good. And I kept going and I would get to the point that I could actually feel my skull bones relax inside felt like really really good deep relaxation so I actually had some x-rays taken last year to 2021 compared to 2013 and can see that the bones themselves have shifted the eye sockets have aligned my jaw was way off to the side it's still not fully centered but it's way more than it was and my neck which has been bent since I was born I believe and my foot was up against my shin my whole body was twisted and it's untwisting, so it, my neck straightened and I've grown half an inch because of that release of dis-ease or tension deep inside the body. Absolutely. You you said a mouthful, but what you said was dis-ease <laughs> because that's what it is. It's a dis-ease in our body. And just knowing that we as human beings are very powerful people and we have the power to heal ourselves from inside out, but it takes something to do that. What is that? What is that something <laughs> that it takes? It takes will. You got to have the will. You got to have the desire to do it. And I really, really wanted to change. So, you know, anyone else out there who really, really wants to change, they can do that. Yeah. And I, I believe, you know, my whole journey is about uh, expanding awareness. Right. So now I'm aware at a deeper level. But I think even those first steps using the EFT, I suspect that even that is changing the physical. It's releasing dis-ease at a deep level. We just don't have the awareness to know that. Yeah. 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 And I think a lot of times people are scared to step out of that comfort zone because they say I've heard so many people and clients that I've worked with that say, oh, I really want this and I want to change. But then it's like, but you're not doing the work, the things that it takes for you to be able to do that. And sometimes, you know, I don't know what it takes for someone to say, okay, I've had enough and I really want to do this or I can do this. Because I think, like you said, it's the will to be able to do it. And a lot of times people think that something special has to happen or they have to be connected to something to make them want to change that. But it starts within. Yeah, but we do. You're right. And we get so stuck in our normal. It's so comfortable for us, even if it's 
traumatic, right? Even if we're in a toxic relationship, it's our normal and it's kind of scary. It is yeah. scary to look at your past. For me, that's why that experience with the cat was so beneficial for me because I could see, I could see that the emotions were just stuck energy. And once I released them, that's where the freedom lies. Yeah. And I mean, I thought, I think our thought process has a lot to do with it because again, with the tap in with the cat, you were telling yourself that you can do these things, that you're able to inject the cat and you're not going to hurt the cat and that it's going to be okay. But I wasn't, I wasn't. See, that's the positive. I wasn't doing that. I was saying, I was tapping on, I'm so scared of hurting okay. my cat, okay. right? Accepting the negative. I'm really okay. scared, right? My hand's shaking and I'm really scared of hurting my cat. And then about, I hated, I so hated having injections as a child, right? I was tapping on how much I hate injections, right? Right. So just letting go of the negative, I don't think I did any positive at all. I just right. let go of the negative, which let go of the fear, so that I could do it without the fear there anymore. Right. But I think even in that with just saying the negative, it, it turns it around. And I think it, it reminds me of children with autism that sometimes with their um, touch and feel and, and how um, when they get anxious and, you know, sometimes I think tapping would really be good with them as well, because like you said, to overcome that fear, if they say, I'm afraid to, to be in a crowded room you know, that would help to release that energy of being in the kind of room. So that makes so much sense. And indeed, the parents of yes. an autistic child, right, they can tap on their own yes. anxiety yes. about yes. their child being yes. in a, a crowded room, because that yes. in itself would be scary. Because a and lot then, of parents need that support, and they don't know where to get it. Right. But also, once they change, once they allow that energy to release out of them they will experience something different with their child yeah that it's yeah. it's it sounds kind of woo-woo to say that until you've experienced it and realized that that really is the way it happens mm -hmm. um yeah yeah because it, it's the perception of it too how, how you're seeing it and, and visualizing it differently now that that is awesome because a lot of times um a lot of times people want to stay in the positive like you said but if you're just staying in the positive, then you're not addressing the negative and you're not allowing yourself to process through it. And I know that um, I've heard a lot that, you know, your feelings are very valid and you can feel that way and you can understand what that feels like and, and absorb that. But the thought of what that feeling is does not necessarily mean that it's true. Well, well it might be true for you, right? So then I would tap it out. <laughs> <laughs> right and allow the energy because we kind of pick up our thoughts I, I think we tune into our thoughts so in order to change or even just doing this work itself changes us so we actually then tune into other thoughts so you were just talking about um, positive thinking you know there's two aspects to that as you do this work positive thoughts actually start to come naturally which is yeah. really fun to experience and that is very different from trying to think positive thoughts, mm -hmm. right? Because when we try and think a thought that we're not actually feeling or thinking, then we're suppressing the thought that we are thinking, yeah. right? So yeah. ideally, then you'd find the thought that you're thinking that's not one you want and tap it out, right? Tap out the energy behind it using EFT. And then another thought will actually come. Yeah. So... Um, when you are working with your clients, you have clients that you work with, people that you teach this work to? I, I only have a few. I'm, I'm more sharing my story and, and my, okay. book, my book okay. has my story. So when, when you are working with someone, though, what is the main reason they are coming to you to, to overcome? Is it fear, anxiety? What is it that, that they are centered on? Um, it's mostly out of control. They just feel out of control with so much that's going on. And, yeah. and then, you know, we work on specifics. You know, what exactly just happened, right? And then, as we said earlier on, we tend to replay things over and over again, but we don't realize it, right? So if, if someone just had something happened fairly recently that they're feeling overwhelmed by, they probably will have had that thought again in the past, 
right? Because we just replay those reactions, right? The word reaction, we're, we're acting on something that we've acted on before. So if we can find those those past events that felt the same way, we can tap those out too, so that it's no longer in our body, so that we yeah. no longer actually have it come back again and we don't have to react the same way. Yeah. And I know you said that it didn't happen overnight. It took a couple of months before you actually mastered it. And I think sometimes we get caught up with things happening quickly and turning around quickly. What do you say to someone that is looking for a, a change and want it to happen quickly? What do they need to ha- do for it to be effective? Well, you need to learn the technique and it's pretty easy to do. I have a demonstration video on my YouTube channel for someone who wants to um, to learn it pretty quickly. And some things can happen very quickly, right? My cat experience, that was like the next day. But if it's if it's longer term, bigger things, then you actually do have to work on it. Right? My mother's death, I worked on it with the doctor. That took away the surface level of emotions. But as I said, it opens up the subconscious mind. So then memories that had been stuck underneath those first emotions started to bubble up and then I had to work on those and release those and then you know just you just get deeper and deeper clearing out basically clearing out that wound or dis-ease yeah. inside of inside of us so it very much the timing very much depends on you know what you're working on and how much trauma you have you know yeah. some people don't haven't had a huge amount of trauma in their lives yeah you know I often think that you're chosen for the task that you arrive at in life. And sometimes you go through things so that you can help other people come out of it. And I I do definitely believe that some people are tasked with things that are heavy. And, And I mean, seriously heavy, but for some reason, that heavy task is enabled them to be able to understand other human beings and appreciate what someone may be going through and be effective in their lives. How much of what you went through, your trauma and, and your healing, do you think was because it was to get you to where you are now, helping people and understanding how to do this work? I think it all was. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you. I believe that the more trauma we have in life, the greater our capacity for spiritual growth it doesn't mean we're going to do it, right? Because my brother had a lot of similar trauma to me and he went the opposite direction, right? He died already from being an alcoholic. So that will comes into play. Yeah, you have yeah. to decide that you you want to look at the path, you want to, to let it go and move beyond it, but not all of us do. Yeah, a lot of times we blame our circumstances and the people around us, our conditions and and things like that. And you wonder how you can look at one household and see different things come out of it. And it's all in, again, perspective and how you've seen it and the will to want something more and to have that drive. Um, I don't know, but I just really love the way that you have embraced your story and how you are sharing it with others because there are so many people out there that are afraid to to even come out of the house and I know even with this pandemic people have got so used to being away from others that they get anxiety when they come into crowded rooms or when they come into contact with other people and it's and it's scary for them and so you know mental health has really been a big topic for the last couple of years. How effective do you think these techniques are with helping to find, uh, um, I I don't wanna say cure because that's not the right word to say, but to find something to help with stability, I guess, when it comes to mental health. (laughs) Well, I'd say they're incredibly effective because that's what they did for me, right? I was reactive, I was negative, my mind was busy and spinning out of control and it's very peaceful now. I'm pretty much at peace wherever I am with whatever's happening. So absolutely, you know, understanding that emotions are just, I mean, we, we use that phrase energy in motion. I guess that applies, but it's, it's energy that's stuck inside of the body. And these techniques allow the energy to leave. And once it's gone, it's gone. So it's, 
understanding that really helped me along the way because yeah. I don't have to get attached to it right the emotions that anxiety it's just stuck energy and it's stuck physically in the connective tissue of the body yeah. so if you can find a way to allow it to leave so something like tapping with EFT or just if you already have that deeper awareness you could just feel those feelings and allow that energy to release yeah. then absolutely it's going to make a difference I actually had someone that um had contacted me a few weeks ago. So she's been doing this. She's been doing the tapping. Now things started kind of a little bit, it opened Pandora's box for her to begin with, but she called last week. So she's been tapping for maybe five weeks or so. And she said she's feeling a level of peace and calm inside that she hasn't felt in decades. So absolutely, it can make a huge difference in people's lives. Absolutely. Who doesn't want peace? Will you um, do us a favor? Can you kind of give, um, I know you've been doing it, but can you kind of give an example of what somebody could do? Like, um, that's just starting out that wants to try it. They could just take a few minutes to, to learn a, a simple technique in EFT. EFT, sure. So let's do something like, um, uh, well, I'm feeling anxious. <laughs> All right. right. With, with, with tapping, you want to be as specific as possible. So if you know why you're anxious, then add those words on to just what we're going to say. So the first thing you do is you tap on the karate chop point on the side of your hand. And that's where you say the opening phrase. So you actually say it three times. I'll only say it once just so that we can um, move a little faster. So even though I'm feeling really anxious right now, that's my truth in this moment. And it's OK that I'm feeling anxious. Okay, so you say that another two times. And then we move on to the, the first point, which is the crown point on the top of the head. And you tap fairly firmly. Um, you don't want to hurt yourself, but you don't want it to be so light it's not doing anything. You're trying to create an interrupt into the nervous system of the body. So I'm feeling anxious. So you just say that as you're tapping. Then you move to the next point, which is the beginning of the eyebrows. I'm feeling anxious. The next point is the bone on the edge of the eye. I'm feeling so anxious right now. The next point is the bone under the eye. I'm feeling anxious. The next point is under the nose on the upper lip. I'm feeling anxious. The next point is on the chin. I'm feeling anxious right now. The next point is the collarbone point. I'm feeling anxious right now. (laughs) And the last point is under the arm where the bra strap goes across. If you have one, I'm feeling anxious right now. And then you take a deep breath. You let it out. And that's one round of EFT. So you would keep going. You would do a round and a round and a round until the anxiety has left. Or it might be that another thought comes up. Oh, I'm really anxious because of this. And then you would tap on that. Or it might just dissipate. That's the ideal And your body will give you feedback, right? You will take a deep breath as you're releasing tension or you will yawn. A lot of people yawn. Some people burp. Some people get really tired. So, you know, don't do this (laughs) maybe for the first time if you're, you know, about to drive somewhere or something. But uh, your body will give you feedback. And, And another piece of feedback is how the words sound as they're coming out, right? If you're really or if you're really feeling anxious, your voice will probably feel really tight to begin with, but it will start to relax as you're releasing that tension. Okay. So there we go. All right. Now, um, as you're tapping, do you have a, a number of times that you recommend that it should be done while they're speaking and tapping? How many rounds? Do you mean how many yeah, rounds? Like when they're tapping. Oh, like five to seven taps okay. at each point, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Some people will do it slightly differently and they will actually tap on one point continuously until there is a shift. So until they yawn or until they take a deep breath and then they know that particular point has released some tension. So that's sort of like a point of contact. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. That is amazing. And so how do you feel that this has changed your life from when you found your mom at 19 years old? to now what's the difference between those two people (laughs) 
That's huge. <laughs> so I wouldn't be here if I hadn't done this work. That's for sure. All right. I wouldn't have the confidence. One of the fun things from looking at the x-rays, not the x-rays from the front, but once um, I have them in a video, once from the side, you can see that that person in 2013 was not a self-confident person, right? Just from the stance of that skull in the x-ray. But when you see the x-ray from last year, you know, if, I, if it's not me and I'm just looking at it from you know, someone else's point of view, that is a more confident person, right? So the whole process has actually changed my posture, the way I hold my body, the way I hold my head, to be a more confident person. So, you know, that shows in many ways in my life, but things around me change, right? I'm more, I am more peaceful. Um, one of the fun things to me is finding out, you know, real, really realizing that our head is the echo chamber of our voice, right? So I didn't used to be able to sing. I, I don't have a good voice anyway, but I, I like singing in the car, right, to myself or the shower. And there were some notes that I couldn't sing before. And because I've released so much tension in my skull, I can sing these notes. Yes. <laughs> my All voice right. has changed. Definitely. <laughs> you know, I am a, um, a ordained deacon. My husband and I pastor a church. And I really truly believe in a higher power. And just as you're talking, and just this is so spiritual because I don't think that we understand that outside of ourselves we're so much greater and the power that we have to heal ourselves and to expand and to grow it. And I mean, it's, it's important. And what the words that we take in, because a lot of times it's not what we're saying, it's how we're saying it and, and, and delivering it to ourselves. Right. Exactly. And so what, what we've been told, our subconscious protects us because we, these are things that we say, we don't want, we don't want this. We don't want that. And so you're either going to get it or you're not going to get it, but whatever you say you want or don't want, it's going to come to pass. Right. And so just being able to retrain your thoughts by accepting those feelings and acknowledging those feelings and saying it's okay that I don't feel good about this I don't have to pretend that I feel good when someone says how are you I'm great no I'm not great and I know people don't want to hear all your problems but you know what it's, today's just not a good day and that's okay you know right allowing it whatever's happening to be okay and it doesn't mean like if I'm feeling angry it doesn't mean I become angry and push that anger out, out onto someone else it just means that I feel the anger and yeah. I allow it to be felt and then it will dissipate and then I yeah. don't have to be angry anymore <laughs> Yeah, you, it's, thank you so much for sharing that because it's so funny that um, my therapist told me, he said, why are you so angry? And I go, I'm not angry. Why do you keep telling me that I'm angry? Well, that was normal to me. But then I started realizing, oh, you know what? You might be a little out of control. Take it down a notch. You don't have to get off. Like you said, you know, you're just blowing up so quickly and you're just, and I'm like, is that anger? Why? Where is that coming from? And why does that make me feel that way? And it was because of things that I had suppressed from childhood and, <laughs> and, and things that I had held back that I didn't want to address because I thought I was okay. And I thought it was no big deal. But when you address it and you're like, oh, I feel like a burden has been released off of me because I no longer have to hold on to that. Absolutely, and, and because okay. it was building up inside yeah. of you, right? So it was going to come out as, as anger yeah. or something. It, yeah. and it was almost like it was pressure on the inside, yeah. right? And so we've this, been programmed to think that that's normal. Right, right. So these <laughs> techniques release that pressure, right, that burden. Yeah. I remember feeling really heavy in my 20s and 30s, like I was carrying this burden around. And, you know, that's pretty much gone. <laughs> I feel very, I feel lighter, right? It's easier to laugh at this point right and and I remember times when it's like I'm not sure if I want to laugh <laughs> yeah. so how did it um better your relationships what did it look like in your household when you were able to put these techniques into play and is your family operating in the same techniques as you uh no they're not and I have to let that be okay 
Yeah. Um, but yes, things change. I mean, one of the reasons I really, really wanted to change is because my boys were young and I didn't want to be a stressed mother, right? I wanted to be a calm, peaceful mother. Like I'd see some other mothers at school. It's like, I want to be like that. <laughs> and so I, I that's another reason I was determined to change. I didn't want to program them with what I was holding still inside of me. So yes, things change. Things got more peaceful at home. Less, I was definitely less controlling, which was something that I, I kind of like felt like I needed to do, right? Because that was from my childhood. So recognizing that and letting it go, it just frees other people up to be who they really are. Absolutely. I used to say that. I used to say, I hold my family hostage and I got to stop this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that whole thinking you have to have control where you're going to lose some kind of, you know, and truthfully, you're the one that needs to get yourself into control. And using these techniques is very beneficial. Learning to breathe, learning to just hone in on saying that I am feeling anxiety right now. I don't like the way that I'm feeling right now. And that's okay. Tapping into that energy and allowing yourself to be freed of it. Yeah. Thank you so much. And what else is it that you would like to leave with our audience or that you would like to share before we jump off of here? Okay. I, I love leaving people with the idea that they have more control over what's happening in their life than they think they do. Right. We're all so divided. There are so many issues that people have really strong feelings about that aren't necessarily in their household. Right. But they're out in society. So we might be watching the news and hearing some we, a politician that we don't like. Right. And we're feeling those emotions around it. Well, we when we're doing that, when we're feeling those emotions, we're actually affecting ourselves right now and we're affecting our future because that's the signal we're emitting and we're attracting it back. So if we use these techniques, even when we're frustrated with a politician or some country or something outside of ourselves, if we take responsibility for that and tap it out and bring ourselves back to peace, then we're creating peace in our household and in society as a whole. So we can really affect the world, I believe, by doing this kind of work. Absolutely. And if we remember, it's not about changing others. It starts with ourselves. And when you start to change inside, it's going to flow outwardly and then it'll go and resonate with others. And it's not the fact that things around you are changing, but if you change, things around you will look differently to you and you will see it differently. You'll interact differently. You won't react <laughs> in a harmful way to yourself or to others. And thank you so much for sharing. Please tell us, um, I've got it on the screen, but tell us how to get your book and what are ways that people can get a hold of you? Sure. Yes. My book, A Pathway to Insight, details my story, the different steps so someone else can do the same thing. And it's available on Amazon or you can ask your local bookstore to order it. I also have my YouTube channel, which has a demonstration of EFT and a demonstration of feeling your feelings. So you can learn how to do it yourself. And I have a public Facebook page. And I have my website, which has my x-rays on it. So you can go there and see how powerful we are when we do this work. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us again today and sharing your story with us. I am so grateful when people come on and allow their story to be told because that there's someone out there that can resonate with that and that their life just might have been changed today. So hopefully you got something out of watching Anne today and tell her story and learning about tapping. So try something new. If what you've been doing isn't working for you, tap into something different that might change your life. And when your mind is changed, then the things around you will start to look differently. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we will have Anne's information on the website. We do have a new website. It's still the same link, so you can catch us at yourfullmindlife.com. But you can also connect with her through our link, her links on our webpage as well. And go and get the book, learn more about Anne and tapping and how you can just be more in tune with yourself by focusing on those things that are deep down within that need to surface so that you can be freed from it. Always remember, you were created with a purpose now. Go be great. Thank you. <laughs>